All right, guys, we're back over here at uh, Premium again, and we're back on this 2009 Dynasty again. And this time, we're going to try to do something simple. I don't know if you guys can see the slide out topper. We're going to replace that fabric because now, even though from the ground it looks like maybe it's dirty, got some water, algae growing on it. And yeah, maybe that hem is uh, uh, separating. Overall, it should be fine. I'm going to tell you a secret. I love this thing. So from the ground, everything looks fine, but if we look over here, it's not fine. Now, a few videos back, I talked about how from the ground it could look fine, but uh, the centers like to let go, and you don't know that they let go because from the ground it looked fine. That's why it's important to always inspect. What can happen is all that rain that's cascading from the roof down onto the topper right here, this becomes a great big funnel. And now it, you get water right here, it goes over the top, and now you've flooded that seal right there. That's just a, a contact seal. It's not going to handle that much water. So now you've actually created a problem in the slide out because it can't handle that, that amount of water. So that's why it's important to always look at these things. I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys how to do this. Should be a pretty easy job. So this is a Carefree of Colorado topper, and this is the newer one. It's got this wrap on here. This wraps here mostly to keep it from, as you can guess, billowing. So there's no, no lock arm on these. Uh, now this is an acrylic one, so it's more like cloth. You can order one, uh, a replacement one. It can take forever to get to you. Uh, or you can just replace it with the uh, the vinyl, the black vinyl. It'll be just as good, just as durable. Uh, it's just as easy to do. Or you can go with some of those uh, aftermarket RV topper or fabric manufacturers. I've never dealt with them, but they seem like they make good products. Now, my good friend Stacy with Onis RS in Apache Junction, Arizona, would have been done with this by now. But I'm not as good as he is. I showed how fast he did a, a Dometic patio on him. A few key things to remember on these Carefree of Colorados. Now on all of them, unlike the Dometic slide-out toppers, there's only one torsion assembly. And on this style, this side with a, uh, a bolt in it, that's going to be the, uh, the idler side. There's no, to there's no torsion on that side. So there's only a torsion spring on the front side on the, of this one. So unlike that Dometic topper that I just rebuilt that had two torsions, there's only the one. And then the second thing to remember is you have to figure out which topper you're dealing with. I don't know the names of all of them, so this is only going to be applying to this style right here. If you have the one with just a half uh, a crescent moon, just a wrap on the bottom side, where this section right there would be, this won't apply to that. It'll be similar, but different. So first thing we're going to do, it's just a 3 uh hex head right there. All we have to do is back that out. It's actually threaded into the cap, not into the, this. Well, the let's see. This one we just have to loosen up. All we have to do is loosen. We'll go to the front. And notice on this side, there's no center hole. You know what we're going to do is loosen this one up until that clears. Now this whole thing is just going to flip down. It's still contained by the bottom screw right here. It's just being, now it's just acting like a screw. Okay, so that was that part. The next step is get my stuff off the top. Now we're going to physically unwind this. This is where we need our high-tech oil, locking oil filter pliers. We're gonna unwind it and then we're gonna clamp it off. Now it's gonna be nice if you have a second person, but it can be done by yourself. Make sure that you have those already sized correctly to lock down. Okay. Right about to there. You want that seam on top. goes down now this is going to bind up against this cap right there and it won't un won't undo 
that safely locked down over there. We're going to come back to that idler. There's actually a bolt that's going into a uh, nut insert inside the tube, holding that tube in place. This one we have to take out. Same one, 3 sixteenths. Don't lose that, that stainless steel. We might have to loosen up those three smaller set screws right there. Just loosen it, just to give this enough flex. That way you can lift this up. Look at that. Now we can see that set screw I was telling you about, or that nut cert. That's what that bolt remover goes into. It just becomes an idler that it rolls around. Let me see that rolling around. Now we can just pull this out. All I have to do now is pull those two set screws out and we'll pull the fabric down. Difficult. Now I'm not looking for anything, but it's not a bad idea to go ahead and inspect the uh, the roof at this point. You can see my nemesis with the turnabon persists. And I know this isn't a turnabon. This is what the factory used, and I know it should have stuck forever, but everything looks okay. This is just going to be right there. That can be repaired right there without the topper being off. We just want to make sure that. Uh, Anything in the middle. If it was really bad in the middle, we'd have to take the topper off. Might as well do that now. I ain't got time to do stuff like that right now. But at least we can note. That way the customer would know. And right now we just have to cut a new fabric to size. I did the high-tech method of leaving it out in the sun to uh, warm up so it's a lot easier to deal with. Laid out right there. I'll just lay this on top and cut it to fit. Okay, that was simple. Let's get back on the roof. Now, again, if you have a helper, this is going to be a lot easier. But if you're by yourself, it still can be done. It just takes a little bit longer. What we're going to do is uh, make sure that's, that edge is nice. I just usually get a unibit and use it as a file right there to get rid of any burrs. Right on this edge, get a screwdriver and spread it open. There we go. Now we just have to feed it on. Well, you can use a silicone spray or dry lube to help slide it on. Uh, this is just glass cleaner. It works just as good. And you don't have to worry about it interacting with anything. Yeah, you know, once you got it on, it's not vital, but it's good to make sure you're kind of centered. I don't know, that's about a finger. That's about a finger. Next step is to put the tube back in. All right, put that bolt back in there. Turn it back up. That was simple. Too simple. Now all we have to do is go over here. I forget, this is still under tension, so we need to just take it off. Just holding it. There we go. There we go. Now we just have to flip this back up. Put those bolts back in. Remember, it's threaded into the cap here. All it's doing is going to uh, a little, becoming a pin, holding this uh, aluminum wrap on. <laughs> Just tighten up that one. Just tighten up that one. And don't forget, I have to tighten up those other three. All right, well, that's pretty much it. Now I just have to go inside, run the slide out room in a few times, and then put the uh, uh, set screws in.
Okay, so with the side out room back in, what I have to do is put those set screws back in again. It's going to kind of keep it from walking around. You might not ever get all the wrinkles out of here. That's normal. This awning rail isn't on there perfectly straight. The slide out isn't built perfectly straight. The roof isn't perfectly straight. You're never going to get it perfect. It's not going to the moon. Okay. And that's the way I do it. Maybe you guys know a better way of doing these fabrics, but this way has worked out pretty well for me. I haven't hurt myself on these yet. Yet. All right, guys, so there you have it. Installing a, or replacing the slide-out topper on a carefree slide-out topper awning. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. If you have a scissor lift, it's a lot easier. Uh, but this is going to be vital. You don't have to have a scissor lift, but this makes it a lot easier. Locking oil filter pliers. Um, at any rate, I love the scissor lift. I was able to pick it up because uh, a couple of good friends of mine, Danny and Josh, weren't using it, and they sold it to me at a great price, and it's been fabulous for me. Thanks again, Danny and Josh. Thanks a lot for watching, guys.